guys, it's Candace. Welcome back. I thought I would show you how to make a no-sew ephemera holder out of a three ring binder, which this is a small one. You can apply the same thing to a large three ring binder, but um, this is what I found a couple years ago. I've had them for forever, but they they still sell them. You can find these at Staples or any office supply store. I'm sure this is marked down since I have about oh, six of them over there in a, a little file, a little bin area. And it's just a small three ring binder. <coughs> this one measures, oh, Lord, I done lost my ruler. One day I'm going to not have a problem in the beginning. This one measures seven and a quarter by nine and a quarter. So I'm sure I got these marked down, like I said, but still, you know, if you're wanting to ha make an, an ephemera folder that's no so, because I made these before I figured out how to make these sewed ones, which take a lot longer, but they are pretty, but these are just as, just as good. So we're gonna, you know, take one of these little mini three ring binders this is the ones that I had made before. I have probably six of them with different things in here. These just have my <coughs> larger washi stickers in here. So we're going to um, make one just like this, which has eight different pockets in there. And I have um, two pocket pages and three pocket pages. So let's see if we can't get this done. All right, so what I did is I took, <coughs> goodness, I even drank water for him. I took some 110 pound card stock that I got from Michael's. I swear I had a picture of what it was right here. I've lost it. Oh, there it is. It's hidden. Okay, so this is the card stock that I got at Michael's. It's a um, 110 pound. It's really thick, so you don't have to back this with anything it's real sturdy so you know I always get them when they have them on sale because I think they run about $20 or $22 for a pack of 100 sheets but this is what I used to use for my card bases but I made little journals I mean um, ephemera things with them so at first I cut this down because I measured the inside of my three ring binder. This is what the paper looks like originally. I measured in here to see how big I needed my card, my page, I mean, and I decided that I was going to do five and a half, which is, you know, half of the eight and a half by 11. And then I wanted to go inside my rings. So that's like eight and a quarter, but I don't know what it is. I'll, I'll tell you what I actually did. <laughs> So, I did do them um, eight and a half, because it's eight and a half. I said eight and a quarter. Obviously, I can't read a ruler anymore either. So, it's eight and a half by six and one eighth is what I cut it. So, when you cut it eight and a half, which is how long it is, by six and an eighth, you get this leftover. Well, you know, don't panic, because if if you cut this, you can end up with three nice um, tags, two of them that measures four and seven eighths by two and seven eighths, and one that measures four and seven eighths by two and three fourths. So just go ahead and, you know, take your scrap, and if you want to cut them into journal tag backs, because, you know, it's like I said, it's a real good thick um, cardstock, or if you want to make pockets, then you can do just cut it in half, and you end up with four and seven eighths by four and a quarter for pockets. So, you know, don't think that you're going to be wasting all this because, oh, no, 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 no. We use all of our scraps. Okay, so we have those. <coughs> and then the vellum that I ordered, these are the two kinds that I've, oops, got on Amazon. This is the one I'm using because it's actually 93 GSM. It's a thicker vellum than this other one that I had originally got. So this one, if you search eight and a half by 11 vellum, um, this one I got, it's um, from the paper junkie store. It's a hundred sheets. It says on there it's printable. So I print on it and it prints excellent in your, um, in your copy machine. It's $12 and 49 cents for a hundred sheets. 
and the Crydaws store, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, it's 63 GSM. That's the first ones that I ordered, and I had to fold them. I folded them in half and then sewed them. That's what I did in my um, sewn ephemera um, notebooks, the bigger ones. I'll try to grab one and show it to you when we're done. And that's just slightly higher than that, but this other stuff is really nice, thick, a good thickness. Whoops. Of vellum and this is what's left of this one uh, you know granted I have another backup back there because I use it all the time so this is um, the vellum I tried to Google Google or search on Amazon any of these little numbers on here it, none of those numbers mean anything except to the people at Amazon so I just had to go back in there and search because you can faintly see what it is down here but they call it for um, drawing animation because it's like a, a tracing type paper, but y'all know that. But if you don't, there's a little a little lesson for you. <clears throat> All right, so I went and I got eight eight pages of cardstock because we're going to make four two page pockets. Oh wait, I made me a little cheat sheet back here because it got a little crazy. So we're going to make I think. Four, six, six two-page pockets and two three-page pockets. <clears throat> now, the way that I figured out where to put my holes, I, you know, because you, you can't put the holes right here or else it'll be too far out. You can't poke your holes too far in or else it doesn't flip because, yeah, lots of trial and error. So I figured out what works for me in my my little... This size of a ephemera notebook is going in three eighths of an inch, and everything you could tell nobody, no one hangs up. Everybody flips good. I hope this isn't too zoomy. Sorry, I'm actually trying to, you know, do a, a, a nice little to do. That's not so hard. But I'm going to end up making it hard, I guarantee you. So, anyway, I went in three eighths of an inch, and then I just took my cardstock and put it in there as far. You know, as it kind of goes until it bumps up against the the little thing, and then I just took a pencil and I drew just a little line on on the line that we had traced because you know you can erase that when we're done. But this is going to be my 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 sample one that I'm going to you know punch all the other ones out. So let's go ahead and we just try to you know line this up in the middle so our holes are in the middle. If you have one of those three punch paper things or another one, then you know you can line those up and, and just knock it out. But if all you have is a Dollar Tree hole punch, this is the way to do it. So <clears throat> then you just take your card stocks and go in there and punch them all out using your little template. That's the word I was looking for, is our template. And um, so let me just, I know it's going to take a few, a few hot minutes. We'll just do a couple of them because y'all get the gist of this. And then you just try to, you know, put your little hole punch in there and let it kind of rock until it goes in the hole. So that way your template stays with round circles and then you don't have these crazy little oblong things and end up with eggs and lord squares and house shapes y'all know what i'm talking about i'm sure everybody's done it uh, and then you know if you find that this template that you're using is kind of getting you know not quite so even 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 then you just put it aside and take another one and use it for your template but so far knock on wood i'm doing all right so and i should have made a few ahead of time but I didn't. All right. I guess we're gonna do them all since I only only got two left. All right. And then, like I said, you know, if you want to use the the large three hole binder, um, you know, just do the same thing and. And measure and find out oh see that one I went offline so let's use another one because <clears throat> I gotta 
I don't even know what I ended up with that on that one. But it's still going to work just fine in there because, you know, it's cardstock. All right. So let me erase my little, my little markings on here just so it makes me feel better. All right. Let me, and then just to show you how good, oops, I know those are loud, how this goes in there, it sets in there like that, and then see, it all flips, nobody, it, it doesn't catch, it doesn't hang off the edge, and then if you want to, which I think I might do in here, I'm thinking of maybe rounding the edges off, I don't know yet, but let me open this up and put it aside until we're done, because now we're going to do our little pockets so I just drew little cheat sheets for you let me see if I'm there we go so one sheet of vellum will give you if you cut it in half five and a half inches because that's how long or wide our pockets gonna be and then we're gonna do a a, a three inch and a three inch and then it'll leave you two and a half inches so that way you don't waste any of your thing so if you use um, three sheets of vellum then it will end up giving you 12 three by five and a halves and eight two and a half by five and a halves if you're going to make the same size that we're doing today and then this one for the um, the three pocket per page I use two sheets of vellum and out of my two sheets I cut this one in half again and I cut one and a half inches a two inch you know after we cut it in half we're, we're dealing with the half a sheet so we did a, a half we cut it a half an inch we cut it at a two inch we cut it at two and a fourth and then we have we cut at two and a half and all that I had left over from that paper is this little bitty it's not even a quarter of an inch so I'm throwing those in the trash can so they're not going to get you but just to let you see that this is what I'm talking about. So this is our five and a half. After we cut it in half, we got a one and a half, a two, a two and a quarter. And then <clears throat> we got more of the two and a half by five and a half. Because we're going to need them with our other, let me put my hole punch up, for the other one. Because the other one that we used three pockets, um, three pages with, we got... Um, three and a half by five and a half and two and a half by five and a half. I think I only do two sheets of this. I might have I might have oopsed up, but we're still gonna fix this. But we might only end up with six pages instead of eight, but I don't know. We'll see. Oh, anyway, I tried to see I tried to map it out. Just didn't work. Anyway, let's get to, let's get to cracking into gluing. So I always put a little paper clip on there and their sizes so I know what size paper I'm using when I'm going to put them in my on my little page, or I sure will have the wrong the wrong stuff glued on the wrong thing and uh you know how that goes. So let me get one of these so we're gonna put a three and a half inch on the bottom so we can go ahead and do that because that's not rocket science here so let me just go ahead and am I in frame with two let me get up here all right this is a much bigger thing than normal <clears throat> so we're gonna take two of our three and a half by five and a halves and get our little art glitter glue out or whatever kind of craft glue that you use that bonds other materials so like I said I use the art glitter glue and then we're just gonna put a little bead around the three corners you know try to be straight which it would probably do better if I had it flat on the ground but no I'm up in the air and then we're going to if you're going to round the edges, you, you got to remember that, but we don't want it to, I'm just going to go like a hair over. We don't want it to get too close to the, to the hole where it's going to be in our rings. So we're just going to kind of put that down 
and gently wipe it and kind of you know squish your glues out to the to the sides because you don't want to push it to the inside because you know we're making pockets and we want to have as much pocket as we can so we have that one and then let's go ahead and glue this one and you know sure enough y'all I didn't look to see the time so I'm gonna have to buy me a timer and set it on so I can see it because I don't look at my watch to see when we start I just you know that's kind of how I shop at Walmart so I'm one of those people that hog the aisles and just think they own the whole store and um, I say excuse me oh gosh every aisle because I'm just you know acting like I own the place and um, doing all that good stuff. Let me see how many minutes we've got into it already. 15? Oh my God, we're only halfway done. Okay, so um, let's do that. We're going to flip it over and we're going to do um, two more on the bottoms. Ooh. All right. We're going to stick it over towards, you know, on. Oh man. All right, let me give that a minute to dry in the, in the air. Let me put a little more glue on here because, oh, you know, was trying to hurry. So this video might be a little longer than 30 minutes because hurrying gets you nowhere. You know, just like late only makes you later. So if you're already late, just drive the speed limit and take your time getting where you're going. Don't be a crazy woman. Just... Take whatever punishment's coming your way for being late. All right. Oh, I don't even like that. It's not even sticking right. So that one's going to upset me. All right. So let's put some glue in here. So take your time. Don't try to rush it. The glue is the important part. Putting it down is the important part. So... All right, all that's dry. Now we're going to pay attention, set it down neatly, walk it down with our fingers, push it out so there's no extra buckling in it. All right. So now we're going to flip it over because these sides are, are dry. Now, if you want to sew around here after you're done, go for it. But this is a no-sew thing. This is one of those quick and easy um, satisfaction creations because you can make the whole thing and actually use it in, in, in a couple hours. All right, so now we're going to use the two and a half inch, and I just want to see how far I went down. So I kind of went down about four inches. So let's measure four inches down and put a little pencil mark. And it's not quite four, so right right above four. So one one mark above four. All right, and then we're gonna let's go ahead and <clears throat> draw little lines on here too. One little mark above four. Same thing over here. One mark above four. And while we're here with our rulers, let's just go ahead and get the back side done. So we don't have to waste time in a minute doing that, getting our ruler and our pencil back out. So we're just marking these so we can have those ready. All right. And if you want to draw a whole line down here, that's fine. But usually I can line them up. Watch me make a fool out of myself right now. So now we're going to use our two and a half inch ones. And let's put some glue on here. Carefully paying attention. Trying to be straight, but getting enough, but not too much on there. All right. Now we're going to go almost to the edge and we're going to put one side down by our pencil mark and walk our other one down to the pencil mark gently squish it out pat it out with your finger take your dry paper towel kind of rub on there and there's your two pockets 
So let's go ahead and do the back side. Oh. And we're gonna go over to this side because we don't wanna be where the holes are. So we go close to it that we can and then make sure we get our, our edge close to our little pencil mark. I mean, if it's not right on it, but a hair above, it's not going to hurt. Okay, now we're going to take a little card and, and squish out the glue to kind of help make it flat. I know I didn't do it on here, but I'm doing it now. Like I say, do as I say, not as I do. All right, that's that one. Let's go ahead and put glue these on this one I know I just can't tell stories and and and, and truly craft when you have to think and not mess something up cuz it doesn't work I used to be a killer multitasker but pff, not anymore it's sad. I mean, I used to thrive on stressful time, you know, constraints and, oh, we got a deadline for this. We've got to crack these things out. You know, we've got to ship 200 orders today and nope, not anymore. Lord, I'm do good to get up, brush my teeth, brush my hair. Okay, that's over exaggerating, but sometimes it feels like it. All right, and we glue that, kind of hold it, put it down. Oops, make sure we're to the side, but yet yeah, kind of straight on that line and not over in our hole because we don't want it to mess that up. So that's that one. All right, so that gave us two pockets. So let's put our, just to get them out of the way, let's put our two pockets in our, our little binder. So we got that. You know, and, and you do the same thing with the other ones. Um, let's just, we'll go ahead and make these since we have them. So we're taking the three and a half, our, our deepest pocket, because, you know, you always have the bigger washies and labels and stuff. So, you know, that was the, my whole whole reasoning for it was because I wanted the bigger ones on the bottom and then a, a, a little shorter one on the top so let's go ahead and do this one. Oh, y'all it actually rained today all for 20 minutes but we actually got rain it yesterday my little weather thing said that we were supposed to have three days of rain but then this morning of course when I checked it out no, just today. No rain tomorrow or the next day. Oops, see, I made that one look cockeye. So we just wipe it off because it's on the bottom. No big deal. The only reason why it would be a big deal with it being that close to the bottom is if you were sewing and, you know, because you didn't want to take all your pocket away. But, like I said, we're not sewing. But I'll try to make this one up a little higher because see I was talking and trying to tell you something not thinking all right and then we'll pull this up just a hair <laughs> a hair on the right and a hair on the bottom all right and then let's go ahead and flip it over and then we're going to use our last two of the three by fives I mean, three and a half by fives, I'm bad. Let me just make sure. Three, it's three by five and a half. Well, that's what my, my template showed you was three inches. I don't know why I wrote three and a half. Because I wasn't paying attention. See, my poor children, y'all see what you have to look, to look forward to? You think it's bad now? Jeez, you wait till you hit that five O oh, and keep crawling up. There's not enough ginkgo in the world. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. 
Thought we had better jeans. But I didn't y'all didn't have a good enough jean pool. I should have hooked up with one of them nerdy kids and, you know, gave y'all a fighting chance. <laughs> Sorry, that was wrong. But, you know. It's because I didn't eat peas. It's all their fault. They missed all the vitamins from not me eating peas. Y'all, I don't like peas. Can't stand it. Still, to this day, can't eat a pea. I really hate the smell of them cooking. I cooked them for my husband just to be nice. But, oh, I hate peas. They kind of remind me if you was to eat a cockroach. Okay, I'm getting ready to be gross now. If you was to eat a cockroach and, you know, they got that hard shell and it goes pop, that's what I think. I'm a very texture-eating type person and I don't like weird things in my mouth like that. So we're going to go ahead and measure this down here right above four. Um, and then when I was little, you know, my mom and dad used to always, I had to have a spoon of them. And I'm talking a tablespoon and not even a full tablespoon. There might have been six peas. Okay, probably eight. But that's a lot for a little kid's mouth who can't stand peas. And I used to always excuse myself from the table at the very end. And I would tuck my peas on the sides of my, my mouth, on my teeth. And, you know, they'd let me go. And I'd go straight to the bathroom, spit them puppies out in the toilet. And, you know, go outside, do whatever, you know, little kids do after they eat dinner. And then oh, one day, don't you know, stinking pee didn't flush all the way. And my dad figured it out. Well, from that day on, we ate peas. He would always, I'd excuse myself, and he would take his hands and go on the side of my face and do this. And squish those peas on the sides of my cheeks in my mouth. So, I hate peas. My son is the same way with beets. I mean, that boy will eat anything in the world. I mean, he ate worms, people. But he will not eat a beet. And um, I used to kind of fuss at him. Even when he was in his late teens and early 20s, he would try. And he's just like, Mama, I can't do it. You know, I understand. But, uh, but when he was little, I mean, that boy ate any vegetable, everything. But, I mean, he even ate beets. But now, nope, he don't eat beets. But what does he eat? That boy eats peas. He sure didn't learn that from me because I'm honest. I, I did not feed my children peas when they were little because I hated them. I hated to give them peas in their little baby food jar stuff because all oh, that stuff smells so bad. So, yep, yeah, so I don't do peas and I don't like red beans I don't like red beans and rice for that same reason because it reminds me of a pea it's too hard of a of a bean for me I'm just not into it so yeah all right now y'all know don't do peas nope and I've tried a few times you know because I thought you know everybody says oh your tastes change when you get older oh no they don't so, I mean, I will embarrass you in public. I will gag. Oh, it's it's just bad. And my husband's like, well, I don't understand. I'm like, I don't like peas. Now, he doesn't like mushrooms, but that he'll eat them. And he'll tell you he doesn't like them. But at least he doesn't cause a scene when he's eating a mushroom. I don't eat mushrooms either. You know, they're fungus. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm a very picky eater. Hence... The high blood pressure because I don't eat good enough food. So that's because my Nana raised me. She's a Yankee. I was raised by a Yankee. Macaroni and cheese. But I don't think, I don't even remember. My Nana didn't cook. Well, I guess they did. I don't know. My Nana always grew a garden and she, oh, that woman loved her vegetables. I mean, she could put a hurting on a fresh cucumber and tomato salad she would just cut them up put them in her bowl put some oil and vinegar on there salt and pepper and she'd make a whole meal out of that I mean she loved it and uh, but nope not me only kind of tomatoes I like is in the, the bottle of Heinz ketchup you know unless they make it 
you know, squish it down to pizza sauce. And um, I don't even like chunky salsa. It's got to be the thin salsa because it's got chunky things in there. And I just don't do my chunky things. Oh, all right. Back on the project at hand. So if y'all have any food or something that you don't like, put it in the comment and tell me what what thing you just don't like. Because I'd like to know that there are some other people out there that have food fetishes like I do that just can't do a food. Oh. And then I'm allergic to um, iodine and shellfish. So I can't eat... You know, like crabs and, and stuff like that. Which, you know, is kind of hard when you come from Biloxi, Mississippi. Which is, you know, used to be the seafood capital of America way back when. And I can't eat them. I mean, I truly have to take like four Benadryl just to cheat and get some crab claws. And I still break out and help up. But sometimes, you know, you just got to suck that up so you can have it. Alright, so now we got two pages of, of, two more pages of the two pockets. So now let's measure and figure out how I did the three pockets. So let's take our little one here and then we're gonna start with the, you know, obviously we're gonna go from small, medium to large. We're gonna put our largest one, oops, on the bottom, which the bottom is, you know, the two and a quarter, the top is the one and a half, and then the one in the middle is a two. And the only reason why I made them that Am I in frame? Yeah. The only reason why I made them that size is because I was trying to get the most out of a sheet of vellum so I, I wouldn't waste it. Okay, so my top one is looks like two and almost a quarter down. So let's go ahead and measure two and a quarter down because we're going to do our top one and then bottom. So while we have all this out, let's measure two and a quarter two and a quarter, flip it over, two and a quarter. And the only reason why I'm not measuring the other one is because I tend to get a little confused with my marks if I put too many on my paper. I know, I'm a special kind of person that way. So I just know that I'm looking for one line of dots the first time and then after we do the other ones, I'll come back and put my other dots on there, my little dashes, so I can know to be searching for that one because I sure will have some wonky pockets on here. Oh. Alright, so we're doing, got our two and a quarters on here. Front and back. I got two and a quarter here. And make sure that when you do it that you make your little um, hash marks big enough for you to see because sometimes they really do blend in with your paper. Alright, so let's go ahead we're going to put our two and a quarter, which is our longest ones. <coughs> Four here, but I still, I still paper clip them just in case you got to get up, walk away. You don't want to forget where the heck you were. And then you're just all out of sync. Especially, it's most important if you're sewing because when you sew, you got to be able to hit the same area on the front and back when you're sewing on your page. So that's why you want to make sure you, you know, do them in the same place. So when you sew, it's pretty. Unless you're going for the uneven, crazy look, then just uh, go for it. Okay, so I got that one on here. Let me go ahead and flip it and get the back done. You know, and then once you, you know, kind of get your stuff going and your everything cut and little sticky labels or scrap paper labels on there, then, you know, it's really not hard to get your little assembly line going and get your stuff made. So let's put that over there. Oh, it didn't go down fast. God, see? No, no, no. Oh. Well, you know, it's not supposed to be that hard, but... I'm showing you <laughs> all the what ifs. So let's go ahead and put some more glue on here. Because I pushed it down too hard before the glue actually adhered. And my whole little vellum page just took a walk. Alright, let's try this again. Alright. Because I was trying to get it 
over from that hole and I pushed it too hard and it just went whoo. All right, and let's do this one. One, two, three, four, okay. All right, and so I know, I think I'm gonna need another one of these, so I just always put a paper clip on here because that means I need to, I'm probably gonna have to need to cut another one. You do you, I do me. I live with sticky notes and paper clips as reminders of to-dos. Alright. Flip it over. Let's get her back. And if you don't need or want three pocket ones, just make the two pocket ones if you're just trying to make a, a little ephemera thing for, for you, you know, your larger washies or if they don't get stuck in there. But like I said, I find that I usually need two and three pockets on there just because of the different size of the washies and then they get stuck down there. Then you got to try to fish them out Then you end up tearing your stuff and, uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> so now we're going with the one and a halfs up top because that's our smallest page I mean pocket and then we're sticking that on here same thing nothing new just gotta hold your face the right way all right and let's stick it down almost on the edge but line it up on our little dashes oh and don't swipe while it's still wet it moves Learn from me what not to do. That's what I'm here. I need to make a thing. What not to do tutorial. If you don't do this, you'll end up with that. If you do this, oh, you'll end up with that. Okay. All right, let's get this other one done. And then depending on... What we're going to do with this last one, if we need, if we're going to use this or need another one, I don't know. I will look and see. I'm probably going to do a three pocket one. I don't know. Because what I'm want, needing to put in here, I'm thinking of putting some, like, labels. I don't know yet. <clears throat> I mean, I do have kind of a little system for my labels that aren't cut. But once you cut them, you need to be able to see what you have so you can use them. That's the whole point of an ephemera notebook. Because if you don't see it when you're crafting, if you can't see it, you don't know what's there. And the next thing you know, you go buy it again. And again, it's kind of like your husband and his tools. You know, I know my husband has six and eight of every little tool sometimes because he can't never find it. So then he has to go to town because he's doing a project on the weekend trying to fix something that's broke. And, uh, Got to go buy another one of those tools. I know he has one of those tools, but, you know, it's either here at the house, it's down at the barn, or it's across the property over on the shop, and he doesn't want to go looking for it. Not that he puts it anywhere where he can find it. Shh. But, yeah. I know y'all's husbands are the same way. I can't lie, I'm the same way, too. That's why I can't never find my stuff when I'm trying to do a video because I set it down and it's right here by me within arm's reach and up. Oh, nope, cannot find it. Okay, so now I'm going to put my middle pocket one, two, three, almost five and a quarter down is where I want my bottom part to be from the top. So let's measure five and a quarter. There's a little net. So I want to do it like a mark before five and a quarter. Mark before five and a quarter. Mark before five and a quarter. Which is three. I'm five and three sixteenths, but you know, it's easier to say mark before five and a quarter. Sure it's easier to find. <laughs> so you don't have to count. You just do a mark on top of five and a quarter. Five and a quarter, mark on top. 
five and a quarter mark on top. Oh, I'm sure I've lost y'all by now because I mean it's the same thing but you know once you get the measurements you just cut your things glue them in there put them in your little pocket and then fill it up with whatever ephemera that you want and then make you another one all right so now we're using the two inches because that's our middle middle size and like I said you can make them all, all any size you want if you want to do a four pocket you know do smaller ones to get four because I'll show you on my regular ephemera book that yeah I got real detailed for the stuff that I knew I needed and how I wanted to use it and but oh, let me tell you it takes some time to make a real big ephemera thing when you're sewing it and everything else it's um oh for the love of Marion Jiminy's this is See, too been in my mouth. I put them in the wrong spot. <sighs> Let's put it aside. Let's see if we can get on here before this glues. That looks like it's measured in the same place. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. See, that's why I can't do more than one hash mark at a time because I sure will lose them. All right, let's put this one on here. And then we'll put them in our notebook and then we'll throw a few little things in there just so you can see well I mean you can see mine I'll flip through the other one and then but like I said take a an hour get you a notebook get you some vellum and make you a little ephemera holder they're really, you know, not that hard for the no-sew, and if you want to just use the little notebook. And, um, you know, if you're just starting off, that's a great way to go. And, like, if you're just starting a little stamp collection, of, you know, you need a stamp collecting ephemera notebook. This is a great way to do that. And you just make your little um, pocket smaller, and then you can get four or five pockets on a page, and that way you can get, a you know, a little stamp collection going on in there. And... Let me just make sure that that's not catching. No, it's glued. All right. And then we'll glue this one on. And so out of four sheets of vellum, we got, I don't know. I'm getting ready to count. One, two, three, four, four pages. So depending on what size you want that, you know, that you're going to need, then you just go ahead and cut your other vellum to that size so that way you have your eight pages so you know what I had measured was to have six of these and two pages of those but if you find that you need more of the three page one then you know that's great too and just to show you what else I did just to kind of make it look you know a little cuter if you want to do some faux stitching on on here so just you don't even have to use a ruler but come on let's be real I'm gonna need a ruler just take it and get you a sharpie a, a, you know a fine line sharpie and put your ruler against there and just draw some lines on there like it's stitching and it just you know kind of makes it look a little cuter a little more decorative and let's see see and then you can just, you know, go around all of them and make it look like that. And then if you, you know, if you want to cover the glue up, then just instead of doing it on the very bottom of it, then, you know, kind of put it up so it kind of goes on some of the glue. I'll do it on the next one because I don't want my thing to be uneven. <laughs> so, all right, let's just do that. Make our little stitch marks. And then if you want to, you know, like put little X's on there, like cross stitching and or just you can make, draw you some little doodles on the bottom just you know whatever you want and see since I put this one on the very very bottom now we're gonna have to put our little faux stitching on the vellum just because I didn't give it that little 
32nd sixteenth of an inch space like we have on the sides and then let's just go ahead and pretend we're stitching down here on the sides of it and that way it kind of help you know take your eye away from the glue because you will see the glue through here through the vellum with the um, art glitter glue But when you put your, you know, your items in there, I want to make sure I'm going to get this straight on here. When you put your items in there, you just really don't see. Your eyes just don't get pulled to it like it does when it's kind of empty. And then you just, you know, trace around all of them. Put whatever little faux stitch you want in there. You can put a double faux stitch. But that's my little faux stitch pocket and then like I said this is the finished one that we that I had you know these that I did let me show you I'll just show you Ow. hello here's some other ones God, I hope I'm not like an hour yet but who I'm pushing it okay 46 minutes I'm sorry to be so long-winded and then what I do is whatever washies or stickers I have in there I just take and make a copy, you know, throw some on a on my copy machine, make a copy of it, and put it in the front cover so I know what's in here. And um, like this one here, I had little birdies, so I did one, two, three, four, five pages. Am I in frame here? Oh, I did five pages on here because you know I had little birdies and I needed to, you know, put them in here. This one I only, oops, this side I only did four four pockets this one I did five again and did you know the little stitching on the bottom but I think I'm going to go and do on the sides because that looks you know really cute and then you know these I have four this one's got five so this is you know just to show you some of the washies that I put in here this one has the three like we just did and so you know just depending on what kind of washi stickers you have and then I just had one on the back that I just put one large one because sometimes you know you get these large washi stickers and if you don't like I said if you don't see it you won't use it so that's that one let me close this up before I lose the washi and so in this see this is the little copy I made so I know that these are the large ones in here from that washi pack and then this one's got like Victorian stuff in there and so I put like the little card that came with it because this is, you know, I was being a little, I don't know, trying to be organized in the beginning, but psh, I give up. And I got those at Tuesday morning, which they don't have any cute stuff since this crazy stuff that happened. You can't find anything good hardly at Tuesday morning. And then, you know, this is a Tim Holtz one with his little airmail stuff. And then, you know, like I said, just depending on what kind of is in your washi um, pack or stickers that you get just you know you put however many one two three you know this one's got four just different sizes whatever you need to be able to put your <coughs> your things in there so that's that one and then this is my I don't even know oh that's what my insert was that it couldn't be any bigger than that so I just put that in the back so I wouldn't forget what that is and um, let's see this one doesn't have a picture so it's a surprise because I hadn't made a copy of it but it's just um, little this is you know more Tim Holtz stuff just some like words and scripts and stuff like that but I just you know had to put them somewhere so I would know that they're there and so that's that's that I I hope you um, enjoyed it I hope it's something that you maybe haven't thought of doing that you will sit down and, and do and make you a little ephemeral holder and um, get some of your washi stickers out of their plastic bags into where you can see what, what you have so that way you can you know craft and create better when you're um, pulling around looking for them so uh, and don't forget comment on the bottom about your your nasty vegetable or food that you can't eat you know let me know so I'd like to get a kick out of some of y'all's <laughs> and um, so Thanks for watching. Sorry it was so long. And um, have a blessed day. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Bye, guys.